Okay, this is a Spaceman 42 channel here. And what you're watching is a live Hawaiian feed off the internet of the Ven a Venus crossing the sun, which is more like a Venus lunar eclipse. Of course, there won't be any shadow on the Earth. And that's Venus. Those are sunspots. And that's from that observatory in Hawaii. I have it on full screen right now, so... It's quite interesting. And there's a timer. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. Okay, let's see. Get the little screen in there. We're running for about over, and yeah, those are two sunspots. Oh, they're lost sunspots, and that's, ooh, they changed, well, they just changed the filter on that. I think it's the infrared, I think it's the, yeah, I think it's the infra infrared. That looks interesting. Of course, you don't see as many sun. You know, it's hard to see the sunspots. Oh, what's? Oh no, that's. Oops, that's not. The, sorry, that's not my. That's. You're watching live coverage of the Venus Transit 2012 from the summit of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. This is NASA Edge, an inside and outside look. NASA. Coming up now is a uh, interview with Dean Peschnell from NASA Guidance, uh, talking about the Solar Dynamics Observatory or SDO. Check it out. <laughs> okay. Well, although we are seeing, you know, very nice prominent eruptions that go up high above the sun and then crash back down, and that's been pretty nice to watch. And people tell me they've never really seen that before, so it's an opportunity to see something that we could have seen for a long time, but are, are only seeing it for the first time. It's nice to see you know, things that we kind of know and thought we understood, and see them in ways we now know we don't understand. But we're also able to see sunspots before they show up. If we look at a chunk of the sun, watch the, this chunk of the sun go, and they see a sunspot. And then they rewind the data. And because we take the data all the time, if the sunspot's in the middle of the disk, they can always rewind it out to the edge and see if they see the signature of that sunspot before it breaks through the surface. So are you suggesting that because of SDO, at some point we'll, we'll know enough about the sun where we can see those indicators and maybe predict the sunspot? days in advance of what actually happening? We're hoping for hours right oh. now. And it's not exactly an easy thing to see. The signatures are very faint, and they're working with data from SOHO, and now they're working with data from HMI to try and move it back further and further. It would be nice to be able to see them all the time. But we only get to see the sun about half of a rotation. It takes about 28 days to go around. We only see it for about 14 days. So if we can see a sun spot several days in advance, that's about the best we're going to Okay. Now they have other feeds, so let's check this one up here and uh Okay, let's check this one up here and uh Norway see what they got here for us. Okay, live webcast. I'm holding this camera because I don't have my tripod with me. Sweden, our neighbor country, the weather at, uh, in 1769 was perfect. And here is a picture of a Swede called Peter Okay, Biden. well, I'm not interested in that. I'm not. So from a space weather point of view, you're looking 
Let's see this one here from from north farther north. Nothing. Okay, let's see this one from Australia. Live webcast. Nothing. And as you can see, the thing's bouncing up and down, saying, Here. Yeah, you're watching this, you're watching this, and there's nothing there. There's nothing there on the feed. Oh, well, hey, let's see the wife from the... I'd like you to serenade us a little bit more. Sure, here's another piece. See if it's better than. Well, there's one in India. That's it. I, think they're... <laughs> I don't think they're going to see much. I don't think they're going to see much because it looks like they got they got too much clouds in there. They're in India. Oh well. Blame the weather, man. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's try NASA TV, see what they got. Is they have a feed on that? After that, uh, because Venus provides that very dark space, we are going to get a, a point spread function, you know, leakage of light from one pixel to the next, and that's very important to, you know, get a Yeah, that's very important. I want to see the, the I want to see Venus crossing the sun, everybody. The, uh, transit is actually going to give us a very good sense of the Let's try the Glenn Research Center. Oops, just to bump my camera. Make a call. Well, I don't think I'll have to think of them. Let's see if they... Ah, we're back to the... Uh, okay, we're back to the... Uh, we're back to the live feed. Okay. Uh, that's what I want to see. Okay, that looks perfect. Okay, now well, this is the one. Oh, they put the... Uh, well, they stuck the ultra infrared on it again. Venus, that's what looks Venus on the infrared. Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, wait a minute. I don't 
with something here. And let me put ultraviolet there. Sunspots. Okay, so like I said, I'm recording this on my video camera. I just holding my hand and sitting on this chair. Trying to be real steady. So now looks at that's a sunspot. Those are sunspots, those are sunspots, and that's Venus. God has a love of that day. What the Greeks say. Well, they went to infrared warp mode again. Now, I noticed something. Ah, there's something right there. I think that's a solar flare down there. Yeah, that little th that little thing, that mountain thing, looks like a solar flare. That looks pretty interesting. Now let's get back to take a look at the rest of the. I'm here with solar physicists Alex Young and Holly Gilbert. Alex, we just saw a segment talking about SDO, and right now I have the uh, monitor here, and I want to show you an image uh, from SDO, and I want you to explain to our viewers what Whoa. they're seeing. Okay? Wow. So this is amazing. This is uh, data in the 304 angstrom wavelength from SDO. This is showing us extreme ultraviolet light. And this is very sensitive to material in the tens of thousands of degrees. And you see Venus moving over. And normally, you would expect it to be a black dot. But what you're actually seeing here is light is being scattered around it. And so it's, it's actually got some color to it. You can see. Um, not just the, the simple black dot. And this particular wavelength of light is really important for looking at things like solar provenances and also solar filaments. And you can also see solar flares. This is actually uh, an area that Holly does a lot of research in. The Holly, uh, Alex just talked about solar prominences. Uh, can, can you explain a little bit about what that is? Sure. They're my favorite solar activity of all time. <laughs> uh, solar prominences are huge masses of, of material that are suspended in the very hot corona, which is the outermost layer of the solar atmosphere. Now these prominences can be seen as these sort of, look, they look like clouds, but they're very dense and relatively cool, as Alex mentioned, on the order of maybe 10,000 degrees to 80,000 degrees. But oftentimes you will see them erupt, which means they fly away from the sun um, at very high speeds. And so they are associated with what we call space weather, coronal mass ejections, and also are also associated with flares because of the uh, process called magnetic reconnection, not magnetospherence. <laughs> is there a difference between a CME or coronal mass ejection and a flare? There, there is. They are related, but a coronal mass ejection is a big bubble of material and magnetic field blowing away from the sun at um, sometimes um, um, 4 million miles an hour. They're, they can be very fast and it's a lot of, of mass. Now, uh, oftentimes with the coronal mass ejections, uh, you can see a flare on the surface that's associated with these coronal mass ejections. And flares are, the, are basically the manifestation of this magnetic reconnection, which is a very energetic process. So energetic that you have all this heat and light that, that you see during a flare. With, with regards to SDO, are we able to see any type of CMEs or flares uh, from SDO? 
Well, absolutely. We're, we don't actually see the CMEs uh, directly. We see the material moving away, and once that material leaves the field of view of SGO, we see it as a coronal mass ejection in the outer corona. And in particular, we see it with the SOHO spacecraft and the LASCO instrument. LASCO is what we call a coronagraph. LASCO blocks out the very bright solar disk to allow us to see the faint corona, which is millions of times fainter than the disk. And associated with that, we see these solar material from coronal mass ejections move out like these big clouds. You know, we've been talking about the sun all day long, but when you talk about corona, for those viewers who are just tuning in to the Venus transit and they don't have a lot of knowledge on what we're doing today, tell us a little bit about what the corona is. Why don't you just get ahead, Holly? Go ahead, Holly. Yeah, so the corona, like I mentioned earlier, is the outermost layer of the atmosphere, and it extends way beyond uh, the surface. So uh, you can't see it unless you have a coronagraph, which is sort of like a fake eclipse. You have to, br to block off that very bright disk of the sun, like Alex mentioned. And it's a very hot atmosphere. Um, it's, you know, a million, two million degrees, and it's basically all electrons. I mean, the plasma is so hot that it's completely ionized, which means that the electrons don't hang on to the atoms. And so you have, you know, all this ionized hot gas in the corona, and you can see it really beautifully in the white light data, which show these beautiful streamers streaming away from the sun. And you can also see the corona in other wavelengths. Um, we can see it in the extreme ultraviolet. It appears different because then you're looking at it on the disk. So you can see the corona on the disk in those wavelengths, but you can also see the extended corona in white light. And this is a really, really important subject for us because you know most people know about when you are traveling higher up in the Earth's atmosphere, it gets colder uh, and it gets less dense at the same time. But something really ha weird happens on the sun as you move higher up in the atmosphere, it actually gets hotter. It's still getting less dense, but it's much, much hotter. And so really a question that we very much want to understand is why is the corona much, much hotter? So, what, uh, so Holly, we have a, a different view on the screen right now. Can you tell us exactly what we're looking at? Yeah, so this is one of those extreme ultraviolet images from SDO that we're seeing. And here you are looking at the corona. All of that bright region and then the dark region is a, called a coronal hole. So Venus is appearing as a very dark object as it's crossing this very hot outer atmosphere called the corona. Out, outstanding. I have to tell everybody that the weather has taken a drastic change. Uh, the temperature had gone up. I had taken off my outer uh, Gore-Tex shell and hat, and now the <laughs> wind is, yeah. has picked up, and I'm taking a beating, but I'm well, going to work my way through it. Can I mention Alex's hat at this point? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Ron, can we come back up on? Okay, go ahead. So Alex is actually wearing the Venus Transit. The, the yellow hat represents the sun, and there's a black dot that we've been sort of trying to accurately move across the solar disk or the solar hat. And so you're seeing, you know, the Venus Transit even without looking at the feed. And well, 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 Blair is just off camera here. Blair, can you see the transit on uh, Alex's hat? I took a look and so I put my blinders down. Yes. And now, well, of course, now I can't see anything. <laughs> uh, I actually have to look at the sun to see. So the, ha the hat's not a perfect not representation, great. yeah. But, uh, yeah, it looks to be somewhat accurate. So that, that's good. <laughs> Remember, kids, don't look at the sun uh, without special viewing ge uh, gear. And that's Blair with his welding shield on. Um, we were talking about CMEs a little while ago, and, and Holly, we talk about space weather every time uh, we, we meet one another. Okay. Some people out there don't know what space weather is and how it affects us here on Earth. Tell us a little bit about what happens when a CME uh, leaves the sun. Okay. So if a CME, a coronal mass ejection, it can erupt from any part of the sun. So if it happens to be on the side that's facing us or in the right orientation, the coronal mass ejection can actually hit the Earth, impact the Earth, and interact with the Earth's magnetic field. Sorry. And that's when we get magnetospherence. Hope Blair's happy about that. Uh, he just left. He just he left. Just left. Um, <laughs> so what what that can cause between flares and coronal mass ejections interacting with the Earth, right here on the surface. Actually, we're at higher altitudes, so we're a little bit more exposed to this stuff. But on the surface, we're safe. We don't get exposed to the extra uh, charged particles and, and and whatnot. 
so the magnetic field of the of the Earth acts as a shield, as well as the atmosphere acts as a shield. But it can cause problems with our technology and satellites. That well, are let's see if they the got. We can get my bread calf from the one in Australia. I'm gonna think we could think we I think you've heard enough of them. Okay, there's nothing coming in on from Australia. Now let's check the one up here in Fairbanks, Alaska again. Mm, that looks, oh, wait a minute, that's a, that's a simulation. Okay, that's a repay. Okay. No live feed. They're just re they're re booting the they're just replaying the okay we got off the f live screen and let's see if the one in California is it's an observatory Far. oh that looks interesting there's there's Dima Titov Dimitri Titov that's two different names I've given you. Colin Dimitri Titov. T I T O. He's still. Oh, now we might have done the. <laughs> Says live, but it's actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all Venus Express related. Venus Express science team. Can you see that? Okay, it says live, but actually this is really recorded from on my video camera here at, at my home of the Spaceman 42 channel. Okay, let's turn the volume back up on the... Yeah, that's solid. <laughs> you have to turn the other back up. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> okay. No, but it's, uh, well, I'll put it together. I'll put it together. After... <laughs> Uh, normally say uh, it's designed like this. Fill the scope. It looks a lot farther. But I have put it together. Well, I should have practiced when my fingers were warm, but I see what I'm doing in that now. And just doing it under the cloud, I wasn't interested. Now I know. But so what it does is it, it there's a lens in the front, and then it, um, yeah, 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 listen, listen, yeah, hello, is that Ian? Yeah, 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 I was going to say we've, we've got potentially We're about to go That's probably okay. Venus. Is someone is someone going to ask a question? Let's see if we can get the feed from European Space Agency. Oh, there's the European Space Agency. And nothing. Let's try this one up here in Nor in Norway. Oh no, that looks interesting.
Now that's Venus right there. Again, I'm filming this on my video camera. Filming the. Again, I'm filming this on my video camera from. Filming the video. I'm filming the uh, computer screen there. Live from Top Scope. Top Scope. Funny thing though. Uh, Different angle. Those are sunspots. And I'm holding this camera in my hand there, so it's keeping it as steady as possible. And if I have to view another... Oops, 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 wrong here. Okay, you can see where it's... Bouncing. And that's where this feed is coming from. This is from Norway, so and that's Venus. Again, this feed's coming from Norway, so... And I do see streaks along the lines along the sun. I don't think that's part of... Oh, well, they just changed it to... Must be a live video feed. Well, they're probably it's live video feed and they put in their own version of infrared. And over there, those are... That's a solar flare. That is definitely... Isn't it? Oh, that looks a lot better. That, that solar fair picture looks a lot better than the one. Let's 
Oops. Yep, that's where it's coming from, alright. There. New, they're in Norway. Venus. Okay, that's Venus there, that little black dot for you that are not astronomy, astronomy, astronomy literate. <laughs> See where it's bouncing, that's where it's coming from. I'm kind of curious what they're doing there and up there and uh, there in Jolly Old. <laughs> what are they doing in here? I guess I just lost the feed. I just lost the feed in England. Now let's see if we can get back to the other trip. Oh, here we are in the light. There's Venus. Hey, welcome back to NASA Edge. Uh, for Venus Transit 2012 on top of Mauna Kea. A uh, beautiful day. The wind's picked up here. Uh, it's probably, yeah, going, I would say, 30, 35 miles an hour, somewhere in there. So we're just keeping an eye on the wind, but the skies are magnificent. We have another special guest with us. Uh, yeah, 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 I don't want to... Uh, yeah. ...and radio astronomer and the NASA manager for the Sun Earth Day who's actually making this all happen. How you doing, Jim? Oh, I wouldn't say I'm making it all happen, but... Yeah. Quincy of them, um, and, and you know, and actually, uh, I've tried to call the people on Mars, and they've never answered. So they're probably busy today. Yeah, they're yeah. getting ready for the Mars Science Lab to land in August. You know, that's going to be growing out. So. I'll Still nothing from Australia. Okay. Let's see. What that's the observatory in guess they want to see the uh, Venus cross the tube but they can't because it's too cloudy Science building, the observatory, road. I don't know what they're saying. They're probably cussing the. They're probably ups running obscenities at the weather. <laughs>
that looks. Now what are, what are we doing? Well, it looks like a research lab. Looks like scientists running up on top. thing in the past is the camera is buffering, the website's buffering. It's probably because it's all the way coming from all the way from Jolly Old England. That's their sun camera. And the guy's right there. there's a guy standing there right there if I'm pointing towards him. No he ran away. No he's walking away. And there are the scientists there. Can't really see <laughs> Oh, well, that's what that is. That looks like a... Well, that's weird. It looks like an auditorium. A small auditorium. Okay, I think I know what's going on here. I think they're just broadcast. It's a web. It's a live. They're watching another. They're watching a live feed too. Oh boy. Okay, yeah. Let's see what we can Let's see. Let's go back to one in Norway. Yep, that's okay. That's Venus there across the sun there. I'm sure a lot of people. That's what a lot of people in the world would like to see instead of a bunch of people giving their standing there with a camera, show, telling them, "Oh yeah, we see this, that, 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 and and all that." Okay. okay. Now let's see. We get the Mount Wilson Observatory back. Uh, uh, less uh, rapidly in with uh, altitudes than in the uh, equatorial or uh, mid latitude regions. And this uh -huh. is also something that we want to model more. Uh, oh, we're back to the live feed, and that's on ultraviolet mode. We can get that out of the way. Okay, yeah, that's an ultraviolet mode. Deep, 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 deep. And there's Venus again. Excuse me. Now, although I'm holding the camera, it seems to be that it's gibbering more on the on the, there at the observatory in Hawaii than it is than I am doing it. Okay. I 
tried, I did watch, try to go out earlier and watch it, try to use the binoculars, not to see it, just to cast an image on the back and all that, on a blank card. I did see the sun, but I did see Venus, but it appeared as a very little, little teeny the tiny planets don't sit in the solar system stop. in isolation. They're surrounded all the time and, by radiation. And this radiation... Yeah, he's talking, and I don't think people... I'm not sure a lot of people on the internet wanna don't want to see that. They want to see the planet. Oh well, let's see. Anything from Fairbanks, Alaska again? No, nothing happening at the surface from this. You just see it in these wisps of stuff that are hanging out over the surface of the sun. Magnetic field, that's the cause of everything. The white magnet, the white spots are magnetic. Okay. Okay, now this one, I'm pretty well sure, this is from England. And I'm pretty, you know, there are people that are sitting there. And I think what they're watching is, I think they're watching other video, I think they're watching other video links from the, the internet. Maybe because the... I got this one monster of a sun scope and they're watching networking feed. Oh well. It's not, apparently they got a bad, keeps buffering as, and so I guess they must be having, let's see if we can get some good pictures from Norway again. Yep, it's the one from Norway, and that's why I think that's what a lot of people would love to see. They would like to see that instead of somebody, a bunch of 40 guys, two guys, you see the thing, and then all of a sudden you see some people talking, and they say, oh, well, this is the history of Venus and all this, and how we, what the corona is. I think people don't want to see that. I, just want to, I think they want to see the whole, I think they want to just want to see this thing, like I want to see it. This is a black and white or, you know, or I think what they did was they did, it's probably shined on a surface and they just videotaped it. They're probably using a black and white camera or something. I must admit, you know, theirs is pretty, compared to the one in Hawaii, theirs is really steady and it's not even, hardly even moving. Now, uh, if you're wondering why I sometimes get out of focus, that's because of the camera is, uh, I have my, my camera is on auto focus, so. I think the one in, uh, in my opinion, the one in Norway is a lot more steadier than the one in Hawaii. Okay. Well, I think that's all I can. Let's check the European one if they got still got a live image. If they have a live image, nothing. Bouncing up and down and nothing. Well, we got an image from Australia, but he ain't seen anything. And it's buffering again. Oh boy. Guess they're having problems in Australia with their internet feed. <laughs> 